Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Crazy Flyer 175 channel. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be home tonight. I actually got lucky. I'll tell you guys all about my day here uh, after we get going. But needless to say, I'm actually really glad to, uh, you know, be home tonight. Uh, I wasn't expecting to get home until probably around 10 o'clock p.m. Usually, if anything, I get home later than expected. But, uh, we got lucky today. Um, you know, and unfortunately my luck comes because a hurricane hit the northeast. <laughs> you know, uh, basically what happened is I was supposed to go to Newark today, this afternoon. Uh, you know, I was in Rapid City, I was going to go to Newark. And then I would work a flight from Newark to my home base. But, turns out that hurricane kind of mess things up. The airline decided to go ahead and cancel our flight to Newark and our flight home from Newark. And so we got lucky and we were assigned to reposition an airplane to our home base. That like never happens. <laughs> so, you know, I got to be home a few hours early. So I thought might as well take the opportunity. I'm supposed to be flying anyways. Let's go fly an airplane. I did get a chance to fly like right over uh, Chicago earlier today. Um, and it's pretty cool. Um, beautiful day in Chicago and I thought you know let's take a let's take a GA airplane let's go fly up the uh, shoreline of Lake Michigan fly over like the downtown area we'll stay below the Bravo shelf and we'll have a little bit of fun I'm excited for this so hopefully you guys will like it too uh, we're just gonna go do some easy VFR flying this is all gonna be on paved runways presumably <laughs> uh, no more backcountry flying tonight at least for tonight uh, steezy VFR stuff. Well, let's get going. Bring the master on. It's kind of weird. Never seen him red screen on me before. Oh, did I get the sound turned on? There we go. Let's say that was rather quiet. All right, that's good. There, we'll turn turn our strobes on. It's on. Let's see. We got a clear area. Master switch comes on. Clear prop. There she goes. Made me nervous there. I didn't know she's gonna start for a second. All right, uh, engines running. Oil pressure. It's in the green. Gauges are green. Good deal. Turn the position lights on. Flaps to take off. Trims neutral. And uh, I think this should have just a simple uh, GPS flight plan that I created. I just created some custom waypoints to take us up along shoreline. Just in case I feel like being lazy and turn the autopilot on in the, in the DA-40. Uh, well, let's see, we got flaps extended. Should I have everything set up here? I'm just going to check my screen, my stream monitor here. I want to make sure everything is working for you guys. be awkward if it was like still on a black screen or something. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. All right, so we're gonna taxi out here at Chicago. Uh, we're, by the way, we're at Gary, Chicago. So this is Golf Yankee Yankee. Uh, we're gonna take off, we're just gonna fly shoreline and we're gonna land tonight at uh, Northbrook. Or sorry, not Northbrook, it's uh, Chicago Exec. Uh, Papa Whiskey Key though. Which is right next to the Northbrook VR. <laughs> a little bit south of it, actually, a few miles. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we'll get a taxi. Actually, this is an ATIS. Gary Airport information, Golf 2300 Zulu. Wind 034 and 2-2. Visibility, 1-0. Sky condition, ceiling 1,100 feet overcast. I don't think I believe him. <laughs> Looks pretty Zulu. nice to me. 1-0. Altimeter 30 decimal 00. zero. 30 ILS or runway tree right zero in use. Landing and departing runway tree zero. All right, runway three zero. Pull up the taxi diagram. Oops, short short I find controller on initial contact. You have golf. Gary Airport information. Golf two tree. All right, so we are ready to taxi with golf. We're expecting three zero. 
Airy ground and 175 CF 1145 with golf request taxi uh, for takeoff north departure. My call signs also. And 175 CF 1145 taxi to and halt short of runway 30 using taxiway alpha. Contact tower on 125 decimal 6 when ready. All right, so 30 via Alpha. Taxiing hold short runway 30 using taxiway Alpha and 175 right, CF 1145. Clear on the right. We're gonna taxi here. My track IR is really sensitive tonight. It always takes me, you know, if I take a day off, like. At work, coming back to track. Oh my gosh, turn airplane turn. Coming back to track. IR is always a little bit different. It takes a second to get my head used to the movements. Come on, airplane. There we go. Oh come on, turn. Ah. <laughs> I don't know why it's being so difficult to handle on the ground today. I mean, diamonds have traditionally been a little bit challenging to handle on the ground, just because they got the free casting nose wheel. Once we get used to them, they're actually nice, but I don't have physical rudder pedals. So, struggle. There we go. If I can just keep it on, <laughs> keep it on center line, you know. We got a chance. All right. Uh, we're joining Taxiway Alpha, so I'll bring the iPad up for you guys. Uh, actually, it's not showing where I am. We just left that west ramp right there. We're just uh, kind of like on, I guess it's like where Charlie and Alpha meet. We're going to be making a left-hand turn here. Join in Alpha, taxiing to the departure end runway 30. So now where you see that taxiway A Alpha, we're taxiing kind of towards the right side, or we're taxiing eastbound on Alpha, so we can depart 30 towards the west. I figure I didn't really need a whole lot of moving map. It should be giving me my moving map display. I don't know why it's not. Actually, I might know why it's not. Let's start up one quick program here. Um, well, apparently that program is broken. Alright, well, we don't need a moving map tonight. This is pretty easy flying. I don't think I'm going to have to struggle to find the airports <laughs> like I did on the backcountry trips. We're just going for fun tonight. We're going to fly along this, you know, the Chicago skyline. Check it out. I haven't flown over here in Flight Sim 2020 yet, so... I don't know what the scenery is going to look like. I imagine it's going to look pretty cool, though. Maybe a little city. Should only be about a 20 minute flight direct. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take scenic route. We might even do a couple of touch and goes or something like that once we get up to uh, Chicago exec. We're just chilling, taking it easy. Alright guys, so normally we would do a run-up check as we're taxiing out, but as you can see the uh, buttons that you'd use to conduct a run-up check in this airplane are uh, inoperative. So, um, you know, this thing doesn't have like a propeller control or mags to check, it's literally got an on-off switch and a test button, ECU test button, and that test button is not modeled, so... There is nothing that we can really do for run-up. So we'll just go ahead and say that it's done, and uh, we'll depart here. We'll swap over to Gary Tower. And it should let me say that I'm ready for departure. There it is. Gary Tower and 175 CF 1145 ready for departure to the north. I don't know why my call sign screwed up. I screwed something up in there. And 175 CF 1145 right, altimeter 30 decimal 00 wind 034 at 22. Departure to the north approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 30. 
cleared for takeoff runway 30 and 175 CF 1145. All right, guys, no traffic on final. We got the clearance for takeoff. Runway is clear. Let's go flying. Turn, airplane, turn. Takeoff power set. We definitely got a little bit of uh, wind from the right side, right crosswind. diamonds fly really nice. I've actually got about 150 hours real world experience in a DA40. It wasn't this exact model, it was the uh, Lycoming engine. This one has the... Uh, 175 CF, 1145 continue for north departure. Gary Tower in 175 CF, 1145 continue for north departure. It's kind of a weird call. Anyways, um, yeah, so I've flown the Lycoming model. Never flown the Austro engine DA40, but it seems like it flies pretty nice. It's got, you know, similar handling characteristics to, uh, you know, any diamond if you've ever flown one. They all fly very similarly in, in my experience. Alright. Wow, that traffic is cruising around that roundabout. Look at that. <laughs> Opposite directions. Kind of iffy. All right, we're up and away. We'll pull the uh, power back. So everything's again real life. When you pull that, see that load gauge on the top of the engine gauges here. When that comes back to 90, this should automatically pull the RPM back to I think it's like 2200 in this airplane. So they don't. Uh, they just don't have that quite modeled correctly. I'll just have to ignore it when I fly this airplane. I wonder if there's a fix out there. I should look and see if there's a mod. All right, we're going to level off here, actually, probably at about 2,000 feet. So we just took off from Gary. Uh, we are going to be flying under Chicago's Class Bravo. The tallest shelf that we're going to be under is at 3,000 feet. So we'll climb and maintain 2,500. That'll keep us, you know, um, that'll keep us 500 feet below that. Uh, controlled airspace keep us clear of all the traffic going into uh, going into O'Hare they tend to fly if they're landing to the west which they probably are with the winds today uh, they tend to fly a very long final approach from way out over here over uh, Lake Michigan into uh, Chicago O'Hare I have flown that approach many times in real life all right, so we'll level off here at 2,500 feet, and we'll make our way. We should be over the downtown area here in about five minutes. Let's cruise along for now. Get the airplane trimmed out. And 175 CF 1145, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Gary Tower and 175 CF 1145 frequency change. That call sign is so screwed up. I think I accidentally I must have put my call sign in the airline box, so it's like trying to call my airline what the call sign is for the airplane, and then I put some, you know, a four-digit number after it. It's all sorts of screwed up. Oh, well, we're just flying and having fun. So, um, let's talk about the channel for a minute. So I've been going now about five or six weeks, about six weeks now, I guess, since I started, um, creating content for Twitch and YouTube. Been a lot of fun. Um, I don't plan to stop, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but uh, I do have a lot of stuff kind of coming up in my life in the next, uh, you know, the next little while here. Let's set power like 70%. There we go. Um, you know, so with the craziness of the summer and the rebound of the economy, uh, I've pretty much been a workaholic this summer. Um, I haven't had a chance to visit my friends or family 
uh, in about three months. So um, I've got two days off work here. Um, and I'll be producing a couple of videos in the next couple of days, create a lot of content. But then I have four days of work, and as soon as I get home from those four days of work, I'm actually going to try to hop on an airplane to go out and see my family. So I'm probably going to be gone. Um, after the next two days, I'll probably be gone at least eight or nine days. And during that time, I probably won't be really producing uh, any content or live streaming or you know online gaming in general uh, during that time so the channel is going to go a little bit quiet for probably about a week and a half maybe now when I do get back I'll have a couple of days assuming all goes to plan and I can get home on the day that I want to because I am you know um, you know when I use my flight benefits to travel um, I don't you know I don't pay much for it but I'm also not guaranteed to seat on an airplane so Assuming I get back on the day that I want to, I'll have three days after that trip. But then I start literally a 10-day stretch of work where I only get one day off in that entire 10-day stretch. So in order to get the days off to go visit my family, I had to make some sacrifices. And I'm also moving to a new apartment in September, and so I had to get those days off. So. In order to get the days off I needed, I had to sacrifice, um, you know, days off at other times of the month. So, um, you're probably going to see, you know, maybe a week period. I'm probably going to put videos out on YouTube. I've got a few banked up that I've recorded that I haven't released yet. So you might see a few uh, come out here and there on YouTube. Um, it's not going to be an everyday thing, though. You know, it'll be once every couple of days. the next little while loop, a little hang there. Um, and then likewise, when I get to that 10 day stretch after my trip, you know, I'll have probably, I don't know, you'll probably see about five days where there's a lot of content. And then it's probably gonna go quiet again for, you know, about eight or 10 days. You know, there again, there'll be a video every couple of days, but um, it won't be nearly as regular as it is now. Now after that stretch, I do get a couple of days off. I work sm one small trip, and then I actually have a pretty long stretch of days off. But like I said, I'm going to be moving. And so I'll probably be doing some gaming, some stuff during that time, but it won't be a lot. So long story short, uh, again, the channel's probably going to be a little bit quieter this month. You know, just because I've got so much going on between work and, uh, you know, life. But, you know, I'll be back probably October. You'll see me uh, probably putting out a video every day again, getting back to regular rhythm. Because I do love, uh, you know, I love being on Twitch and YouTube. Um, you know, I've got a few subscribers now on each of the platforms, which, by the way, thank you so much for everybody who subscribes on YouTube and follows me on uh, Twitch. I really do appreciate it. I've met some really awesome people. Weeks I've been doing this, and it's been a blast. I, you know, I really have loved that. I do this purely for fun, um, you know, just to share a love of aviation, a love of, uh, you know, gaming, simulation style gaming games that I like to play. So, anyways, so that's kind of what you can expect to see. Now, in terms of uh, the quality of content. A few things I've still got kind of planned. First of all, I finally now have alerts set up, so if I get a new follower, a new subscriber, uh, it should be alerting me, and y'all should see an alert on screen as well on the live stream. It's, you know, I really do want to acknowledge, you know, the people that take the time to enjoy my content. You know, it, it certainly makes it more fun when I get that interaction. You get to say thanks, and, you know, respond to people in the live chat and everything. So those are some of the improvements that I've seen coming. Um, it's all implemented now. I'm also going to be trying to improve the quality of the audio. So believe it or not, still at this point, all of my voice is recorded on just a headset microphone. I don't have a, a real, you know, content creator 
quality microphone uh, yet. I actually ordered one, and wouldn't you believe it, Amazon lost it somewhere in the process of getting it. Hey, check this out. Here, we're going to circle around here for a second. Actually, we'll, uh, we're going to swing out wide and we'll talk about this. Um, anyway, so I lost the microphone. Uh, thankfully, they gave me a refund because, I mean, they literally sent me an email that says, hey, we think your package is lost. Uh, they don't know where it went. It got lost somewhere in Kentucky. They know that much. But uh, anyway, so got to order a new microphone because my first attempt to buy one, it didn't even show up. So um, we're going to be doing that. So those are kind of my upcoming plans. I want to get more involved with my uh, viewers, my followers, and subscribers. You know, give them a chance to really interact with me and you know, be part of the content, be part of the, the fun that we get to experience. So those are kind of my plans for improving the channel. Uh, I'm still in the works. I'm going to definitely, I've been saying it for like two weeks, I'm going to create a couple of new playlists so we don't get so much regurgitated uh, you know, music every day. I don't know, maybe you guys like the music. I like some of it at least. There's, the, I definitely want to get some new flavor in terms of the music. Though. So we'll be doing that through uh, Epidemic Sound. I'll search for some more music, compile some new playlists. So those are my plans. It's kind of what you guys can expect in uh, the next couple of weeks. So I'll be on a lot the next couple of days. I'll be quiet for about a week after. Then you'll see me for three or four days. And then I'll be quiet for about 10 days. So this right here, off the left wingtip, used to be an airport. This used to be called, I think it was pronounced Meigs Field or Meigs Field. Um, used to be an airport right there. And it was actually always like a bucket list item of mine. Even since I was a kid, this airport was featured in like the original Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, if, I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the game Midtown Madness. It was like a car game back when I was a kid. And uh, anyways, it also featured this little airport, Meigs Airport. And I think it was in about 2005 mayor of Chicago at the time, Mayor Daly, decided that he didn't like the airport for whatever reason. Um, I think he decided he was worried about the risk that it posed to downtown and, you know, noise pollution and whatever. Anyway, so he hired a team of bulldozers in the middle of the night to come out and carve up the runway. And once you know it, that you know, pretty much destroyed the airport overnight, in the dark of night, illegally destroyed the airport and it was really sad because I thought that this is probably one of the coolest little airports and I never got a chance to fly here but uh, anyway so the airport the airplanes that were stranded at the airport eventually were allowed to take off there's a, a portion of the taxiway that was you know relatively undamaged and so Basically, they had a, an opportunity for a mass exodus. You know, people that had their airplanes based here, you know, got to take off on this little section of taxiway, um, never to come back to Meads Field. So, anyways, just a little bit of history. Now I think it's like a park. You know, that's what the grass areas there are. Um, I don't know what else they use it for, but yeah, that was at one time an airport. And it's funny, so. Yeah, I think one of the reasons it was cited as to why the mayor did that is he didn't like the little airplanes and everything close to downtown and uh, wanted more control. The ironic thing is this used to be a Class D airspace and now it is only a Class E airspace, which actually means it is technically less controlled. So. Isn't that ironic? I never like to hear stories of people going out and tearing up airports. You know, so in reality, the world's not really building a lot of new airports. And if we lose the ones we have, you know, we lose a lot of the freedom 
that you know GA pilots enjoy being able to fly different places. Well, beautiful day in downtown Chicago. Scenery looks pretty good actually. Um, I've liked the scenery here along the shoreline a lot more than I thought I would. It is looking not bad. Uh, let's see here. I gotta be careful because uh, we are pretty close to the next shelf of Class uh, Bravo airspace. It's only maybe a half mile inland from the shoreline. So we gotta kind of keep it out over the shoreline here. But uh, the ship? Oh yeah, there's a container ship right there. Oil tanker maybe? I don't know what kind of ship that would be. Well, that's pretty cool. Anywho. Uh, let's see. Any other cool landmarks? I know there's a... Uh, is it Wrigley Field? There's two There's two stadiums in... Uh, baseball stadiums in Chicago. And I can't remember which one this one is. I think it's Wrigley Field up here. Um, actually, I'm going to look at the chart real quick. It might tell me. No matter, it does not tell me. I don't know. I might be wrong. I believe this is the field where uh, the uh, the Cubs play. If you look way out there, there's actually a little too much sun glare to see it real clearly, but there is Chicago O'Hare International out there. And if you ever have seen this airport from the air, it is a massive airport. I have had times where I've landed at this airport on one of the furthest runways from the terminal building, and it literally takes 30 minutes to taxi from where we land on the runway to our gate. Like, that is how big the airport is. You literally taxi for miles after you land uh, to get to your gate sometimes. It is truly just a huge airport. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a beautiful evening in here in Chicago, though. Nice day to go flying. Love the shadows on the water there. Again, flight sim 2020 does a great job with graphics. And I mean, I'm on low low graphics settings too for, to get uh, good performance on my computer, and it still looks this good. That's pretty impressive. I can only imagine how amazing this uh, sim looks if you could run it on ultra. Maybe someday I'll have a computer capable. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are almost to uh, Chicago Exec. I'm thinking let's do a couple of traffic patterns. Let's do a couple of touch and goes. I haven't done it in a while. Maybe we'll try like power off 180, just glide it in, you know. These uh, these diamonds glide really nicely with their, they got kind of long, skinny wings. And so they're a lot like a glider in, in how they handle. Beautiful evening, though. Let's see. So let's start listening to the ATIS uh, for Chicago Exec. Uh, I'm going to bring the iPad on just so you guys can kind of see where I'm getting the information from. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on the airport view procedures, and I'm just going to pull up the airport diagram just so I can zoom in on it easily once we uh, ultimately we'll do a full stop over here. Uh, the ATIS frequency, though, as you can see, here on the chart, 124.2. Uh, we'll tune that up on COM2. Uh, okay, I don't know how to get it to go to the bottom of COM. All right, we're gonna do it the easy way then. <laughs> Apparently I don't know how to 
you should be able to click the knob here and it should shift from the top to the bottom and I don't know why it's not we'll just do it this way there we go now we should be able to listen to it at least oh whoops Still 30,000 feet long, that'll be plenty of long enough airport. for us. So we're going to approach from the east here, uh, so I'll kind of set us up maybe like a right downwind, I guess, for 6. We'll see what tower instructs us to do. Uh, normal pattern direction for runway 6 it is to the left, so uh, we'll see here. So if you can, uh, if you look here at the, at the uh, moving map, you can kind of see this boundary right here. This is actually a lower shelf of class uh, Bravo airspace. So inside of this section here, class Bravo begins at 1,900 feet. This section begins at 2,500 feet. So we're actually going to go ahead and start a descent. Let's we'll reduce our power. We're going to descend below that 2,500 foot triangle there. And all of this out here is at 3,000 feet. So that's what we've been flying under pretty much the entire time. So that's keeping us out of the class Bravo airspace. Yeah, it's a beautiful evening though. We're gonna have the sun right in our face here for a few minutes. <laughs> but thankfully it'll be out of our face about the time we're uh, turning final to land. All right, let's go ahead and make our first call to tower. Again, our cruise, our uh, call signs all screwed up, so. Executive we'll tower and 175 CF 1145 is eight miles east, 2,100 feet with Victor to land. And 175 CF 1145 is eight miles east, 2,100 feet with Victor to land. Make left traffic runway six. Left traffic six. Okay. Make left downwind runway 6 and 175 CF 1145. So I'm kind of curious. They want me to do a left downwind. In real life, I would ask them if they want me to like fly over the field or fly around the airspace a little bit. Um, you know, this is a sim, so I can't really ask that question. We'll just fly directly over the airport and we'll set ourselves up on a left downwind uh, runway 6. should hopefully see, oh, I think that's the airport right there out in front of us, we're pretty close to it, maintain about 2,000 for now, Oop, easy there, Get the trim and power set up here, DA40 is a little bit touchy on the trim sometimes, alright, I was thinking it was here, it's definitely not here, I think it's over, that might be it up there, as we get closer. We're still, uh, I don't know, four or five miles out from the airport. We're just going to do a couple of touch and goes. Executive Tower in 175 CF, 1145, 2000 feet touch Let's and go. See. In 175 CF, 1145 Executive Tower. Altimeter tree, 0 decimal, 0, 0, and 0, 6, 4, 1, 0. Enter left traffic, runway 6. Make left traffic, runway 6 and 175CF1145. One, one, yeah, there's our airport. Uh, so I'm going to set my heading bug to about a 060. That just gives me some reference 
over about where our runway uh, runway heading should be. Let's see how's the fuel looking now. So we're transferring from right to left. Uh, I've got a couple more gallons. Maybe we'll keep that transfer pump on for another minute or so. Bring it off. All right. So here's the airport. We're gonna overfly. Ours is the runway that kind of starts over here and runs this way. Generic 7 Victor Sierra, follow the aircraft on final. 1064 at 10. Might have, might have a couple Clear of batteries. Runway 6. Over here at uh, Chicago Exec. Clear to land runway 6 Generic 7 Victor Sierra. Gonna be doing in touch and go. Um, it's a pretty short runway, so we gotta. We don't want to float. Uh, we want to get this thing down like right on the numbers. Uh, so we don't have a lot of runway to work with. This is our runway, and as you can see, we can actually take off going this way, and it's fine. But it's got this displaced threshold here as well, and the runway itself is only a little over 3,000 feet long. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, 3,600 feet long. So. Not a huge runway. I mean, it's plenty enough for the diamond, but not huge. So we'll keep that in mind. We're going to widen out here a little bit. We're going to enter our left downwind. Just kind of scan out here for traffic. Make sure I'm not seeing anybody. And uh, let's see. Airport elevation. I should have briefed this before. It's about 650 feet. So about right here, we're a thousand feet above ground. I'll put this on the left downwind. EMR touchdown point. All right, let's turn fuel transfer off. N175 CF1145. Follow the generic on flaps. 1064 at 10. Clear touch and go left traffic. Runway six. Runway six. Runway six. Airport information, Vic. Uh, okay. Clear touch and go runway 6N175CF 1145. So, supposedly we're following another aircraft, and I don't see him anywhere. Unless it's this guy, like, out here, maybe? On the, uh, on the ADSB. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the flaps up. This is gonna be a long final. If we're following a dude out here on like a six mile final. Real life, they'd probably have you flying like 360s if you're really following somebody way out here. I don't even know if that's the airplane or not. We'll try to follow it. See if we can get eyes on it. It might even. Well, I know that's a jet up on downwind for uh, Chicago. I have no idea. And again, <laughs> this isn't real ATC, I can't ask him. So, oh, yeah, there's sure an airplane right there. Well, guess we'll follow it. Looks like a rather large airplane to be landing on a 3,000 foot runway, but we'll go with it. See how it goes. All right, let's get notch flaps back in, turn in our base. side of, oh, there it is. Alright, and we're turning final. It's a hard little runway to spot. It's not a big one, that's for sure. in. This is a long final. <laughs> Especially in the airplane Zero, office. Alright, whatever it is, it's on the ground, so...
look like a huge airplane. I kind of want to see what it is as we get closer. I don't know if that's actually what it would be. This is probably somebody... I think I'm live on the East server, so... Yeah, this very well could be a real person out here flying a Chicago exec. Pretty cool scenery around here. These apartment buildings here in the, uh, in the trees. It's cool looking. Alright, 75 knots seems like pretty good speed. Uh, as we get a little closer, we'll probably slow up just a little bit over the threshold. So again, we don't want to float. Oh, there's power lines there. Don't be low on this approach. Those are literally right below you. Um, but yeah, we don't want to float this one. So we don't have a lot of runway to play with. There's no Vazzy or Pappy either, so... This would be a tricky one at night time when, when you really don't have any visual reference, you know? How high you are. Alright, power's out. Yeah, we're floating a little bit. I think we'll be all right. All right, we're down. Flaps to take off. Trim. And here we go. And we're climbing away. Yeah, it's a pretty short little runway. Let's do one more touching go, and then we'll probably do like a full stop. Obstacles. Go ahead and retract flaps. Pitch for your climb, cruise climb air speed here. Start left hand crosswind. Somebody else just got a clearance to land. Where is my runway? Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like hard to see, man. <laughs> it's a tiny runway. I don't know why they're using this runway instead of the big one. and 175 CF 1145. So she didn't tell me. Yeah, so we're not following anybody. So, uh, bring power back. Let's bring in a notch of flaps. So if we're not following anybody, we don't need to fly a wide pattern. Ooh, I got high on that one. We might be a little bit high. Might have to work our way down. That's alright, though. Even though this thing's like a glider with full flaps and no power, it'll come down pretty quick if you need it to. Definitely flying fuel efficiently. Actually, yeah, we're right about where we want to be. We're not too, too high. Alright, let's get full flaps. Yeah, we're a little high, actually. Yeah, yeah, so power out to idle, full flaps. I'm going to let it be a little bit fast. Basically, we're just trading some uh, altitude to keep the airspeed up a little bit, but it's helping us lose altitude quicker. There we go. And then we'll pitch back and trim for about 75 knots. You can see how well this thing glides. I mean, this is full flaps, idle power. It's not like the uh, the Husky. It doesn't just drop out of the sky. There we're getting some headwind. Kind of helping us out, and we're down to the glide path. Using some power now. A little left to 
center, work it over. Oh, we're floating like, there it is. Float like crazy. All right, flaps, trim, forward, and power. Somebody on the runway with me? <laughs> That's a bit concerning. Is there somebody on the runway? Hang on, I'm gonna make a little bit of turn. I just gotta know if there is somebody back there. I don't see anybody. He must have been on a different runway. Whoever it is. I don't see them. Him or her. He or she. I don't mean to assume genders. All right, we're climbing up. Uh, let's try a full stop. We'll do a power off 180, just for fun. Executive tower in 175 CF, 1145, 1100 feet to land. In 175 CF, 1145, executive tower. Altimeter tree, 0 decimal, 0 one Make left downwind, runway 6. Make left downwind runway 6 and 175 CF 1145. Alright, so we'll be full stop for this one. And we're going to try power off 180. So once we get about right here, we're being touchdown point, power to idle. And 175 CF 1145. Clear to land runway 6. Clear to land runway 6 and 175 CF 1145. Alright. So we're going to intentionally keep it a little bit on the high side. It's easier to lose altitude and energy than it is to get it back. <laughs> really, you can't get it back if you're not using power. Alright, so we're definitely high. But I know we're going to have headwind on final, so. Full flaps, and we're gonna do a little bit of forward slip. Left rudder, right aileron. See that? The airplane just kind of comes right down out of the sky and out of the forward slip. Hold it, flare. Oh, we're floating. Wouldn't have passed the check right with that one, but made it down. Definitely for uh, We'll turn left here. N175 CF1145 contact ground on one two one decimal seven. One two one decimal seven for N175 CF1145. Alright, and I don't even know where I was parking. I'm just going to go up here to where it says FBO. Executive ground and 175 I'll see CF where it tells 1145 to taxi to parking. And 175 CF 1145 taxi to general aviation parking via taxiway echo cross runway 24. Oh, it wants me to go across. Taxiing to general aviation parking I didn't using taxiway echo cross runway 24 and 175 like CF We're not 145. On, we're not on bats or anything. Uh, there's a car sitting on my taxiway. I don't know where you think you're going, buddy. Oh, there's two of them. Let me just get out of the way. Why are there vehicles driving? Oh, don't stop. I feel like I'm playing America Truck Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> AI traffic, even a flight simulator. AI traffic is getting me. Alright, well, we'll just taxi through the grass. There we go. And, uh, supposedly there's an FBO over here, so we're just gonna pull into this ramp. Well, it's a pretty fun flight. If you've uh, watched the video, I really do appreciate it. 
Um, I love making the content. I love flying airplanes. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. Um, I might get on and do a little American Truck Simulator. If I do, it'll be pretty short. Um, but we'll see what the night brings. I might have a little bit of a little bit of desire to do some more gaming. But I think that'll do it for uh, Flight Simulator. Get the airplane shut down. Ugh, I wish I wouldn't do that. There's one thing a Sobo I wish they would do is let you actually finish shutting down the airplane. I'll go to the menu when I'm done. Alright, anyways. Well guys, welcome to uh, Chicago Exec in the Diamond DA40. A lot of fun. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys have a fantastic, uh, fantastic evening and we'll see you next time. Take care.